The vision statement is something we say with power, uh -huh. unity. Yes. And it's power behind what we say. Yes. It's going to be on the monitors, in your neighbor's mouth, yes. in the trifold. Yes. At a count of three, we're going to say it all together. All right. One, two, three. We are New Beginnings Ministries. Our vision is based upon the scriptorial theme taken from 2 Corinthians 5 and 17, which according to the Amplified Version states that, therefore, if any person be engrafted in Christ, the Messiah, he is a new creation, a new creature altogether. The old, previous, moral, and spiritual condition has passed away. Behold, the fresh and new has come. Our vision is translated here upon the earth through a dynamic, multicultural, non-denominational ministry emphasizing faith, family, and fellowship. We are a word reading, a word believing, and a word doing kind of people, all for God's glory. We will walk in the fruit of the Spirit, operate in the gifts of the Spirit, and daily put on the whole armor of God, believing in the fivefold ministry offices, and taking part in the evidence of His glory with signs, wonders, and miracles following. We long to see lives transformed by introducing a real God to real people with real issues. When you got up and you started um, walking and pacing and, and telling us how full you was, there's going to come a time here at New Beginning Ministry where there's not going to be a blend between 8.15 and 10.45. Yeah. And it's just going to go over. And I saw this, actually I saw, because sometimes the dancers, the, um, the dancers don't be dressed, not the youth dancers, but like me and Rashonda and Akira, we're not dressed. We're just going to get up at a certain time, go get dressed, come back. The speaker go get up, go Amen. get ready to come back because the service is going to be going on and on and on. It's not going to be a break. It's not going to be a break. So whenever God is to catch you full like that, he said lean into it. When he got you full, because he's doing some things in this house. He's doing some things. He's doing some deliverance here in this house. And that's what's going to be happening. People going to be, cloth going to be laying. People going to be all, it's just going to be Jesus kingdom crazy up in here. It's going to be kingdom crazy up in here. That's what it's going to be. So that's what I saw. That's what I saw. So just get ready. Don't, don't, don't get, make that be your norm. So don't be looking around like, why are we not stopping yet? Just lean into it. Just go with the flow. Just go with it. Amen. Amen. Well, what God wanted me to tell you today, how many of you know, um, do know what the word means? Infrastructure. Yeah. Infrastructure is when, you know, for a city, is the buildings, the waste system, the water system, is the communication system. You know, the, the, um, the traffic lights and all that type of stuff. And what makes the city a city? That's what your infrastructure is. And so sometimes when we look at like third world, third world countries, we look at their infrastructure and it's all broken down. Nobody's picking up the trash. They don't have these wonderful saddle uh, lob cables going across, you know, for the phone systems and things like that. There's even cables that are built underground, too. They don't have all that wonderful stuff like we have. They don't have good water. The buildings are holes in the wall. Follow me. Roofs are coming down. It's just raggedy. Sometimes you, how many of you know sometimes the infrastructure is raggedy? How many of y'all know that? Sometimes think your prayer is broken down. Your worship broken down. There's holes in your faith. How many of you know sometimes the infrastructure needs some work? It's dirty. There's garbage all over the place. And God want to clean it out? Because the infrastructure is just raggedy. And what we don't know, because sometimes we delude ourselves. And we think 
need that people can't tell there's something going on with the infrastructure, but guess what? We can tell there's something going on with the infrastructure. Because you're not moving the way you God wants you to move. You can't out when the infrastructure is raggedy of a city. Yeah. You, people can't function as poverty. There's poverty. When the infrastructure is not right, you can't get I can't fresh water. How many know you only can live so many days without fresh water? Right. How many days are you surviving without the word of God? Without his presence and his grace upon you. The infrastructure. The infrastructure. So think about your infrastructure today. But this is what he said. Because how many know we serve a gracious God? And I don't know about you. But I love him. 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 I yeah. They will rebuild the ancient ruins and restore the places along, uh, long devastated. They will renew the ruined cities that have been devastated for generations. So for some people, the reason why your infrastructure like that is some generational stuff. Wow. Wow. The reason why you got a raggedy uh, um, infrastructure. But God said that he will rebuild. Yeah. And that's the point I want you to get to that. And this is what it says in Psalms 127 and what? He said, except the Lord build the house. Yeah. So today, 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 today,
say neighbor. Both crew is in the room this morning. Now point across the room and find somebody that you didn't ride in the car with and tell them, say,
you a good, good father. I love you, Jesus. We love you, Jesus.
amazing because when I talked to my cousin, he said, boy, if your grandmama could see you, you wouldn't be able to keep her quiet nowhere. And so I want you to know it means a lot to me today that you would accept my invitation. I love you. I love you. I love you. And I honor you, Auntie. I honor you. All right, now we're going to get into the word of the Lord. Y'all ready? I feel like my dad, I got a lot to say. <laughs> and I believe today that I, you know, I'm, I'm going to teach. I believe there's going to be a priest that raises up in me. You just know how that goes. But I just know that the Lord has a lot to say. And the songs just lined up and what apostle preached this morning. And I said, God, I hear you. So we're going to start with Exodus 3, 14 and 15. And I know y'all, y'all like, she there again. I'm there again. Because faith cometh by hearing and hearing the word of God. And so the more you hear it, the more you become pregnant with the seed of the word. And so on the count of three, we're going to read Exodus 14, 3 and 14 and 15 in the New King James Version. One, two, three. And God said to Moses, I am who I am. And he said, thus you shall say to the children of Israel, I am has sent me to you. Moreover, God said to Moses, thus you shall say to the children of Israel, the Lord God of your fathers, the God of Abraham, the God of Isaac, and the God of Jacob has sent me to you. This is my name forever, and this is my memorial to all generations. Can you go to Genesis 12, and we're going to read 1 through 4 in the NIV. Uh, 1, 2, 3. And the Lord said, Go from your country, your people, and your father's household to the land I will show you. I will make you into a great nation. And I will bless you. I will make your name great. And you will be a blessing. Three. I will bless those who bless you. And whoever curses you. I will curse. And all the people on the earth. Will be blessed through you. So Abram went. As the Lord had told him. And Lot went with him. Abraham was 75 years old when he set out from there. You can have a seat. Hallelujah. So I want you to, we're going to start in Genesis 12, and I want you to go back to 1. And we're going to kind of walk through this because it sets the scene for what the Lord appears to Moses in the burning bush. This sets the scene of how he's able to have this conversation with Moses and gives him the instructions and he tells him who sent him. It starts here. Oh, go ahead now. Go ahead. And so it says the Lord, L-O-R-D, capital, means I am. But at that time, he did not reveal that that's what it meant. He just stated the Lord had said to Abram, Abram, father exalted, is what his name meant. Which means the one that is honored. So even before I called you and told you what you exactly what you would be doing, because I knew before the foundation of the world. But before I had the conversation with you, your name was already established and I called you father exalted. already established his name. And he says, I want you to go from your country, your people, and your father's house to a land that I will show you. And when I started to look at when he said go, I said, Father, I said, you tell him to leave his country, leave his familiar place. You tell him to leave his clan, his people. And you tell him to leave his father's house. Now, do you understand that when the Bible sets up the family line, that when the person that goes before me, I step into that place. All right. He says, but I'm telling you to get away from your father's house. So, Father, you're telling me to leave everything that is familiar to me. 
She said to herself, the Lord spoke to her and said, would you give it all up? Wow. Would you give up everything for me? Wow. And I sat there and she exhorted and I said, God, I hear you because he asked me the same question on the way to church the next day. Amen. And I said, Father, I would. I will. I have. <laughs> yeah. 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 Uh, and I understand because it can be a place of stripping. Come on. It can be an uncomfortable place because it's unfamiliar. And I've and I've been there before. You know how you have a real good plan? You have a real good plan. You got it all set up. You got the next six to seven months set up and you say, I'm gonna do it like this, and then when I get to that right there, I'm gonna put that on that right there, and then I'm gonna move this way, and then I'm gonna move into that. By the end, I should be doing this, that, and the other. And I got to a place in my life where everything was going the way that I thought it should go. And I remember it so vividly because it was a Christmas that they showered me with so many gifts that it blew my mind. I can remember sitting on the couch and saying, do y'all know something that I don't know? Am I sick? That's how much they, they showered and loved on me. I couldn't believe because I had never experienced anything like that before. I've been used to being a giver. And when all of this love came, I said, oh my gosh, what, God, what is going on? Within the next three months, everything that I knew started to be pulled away. Everything in my mind that I was afraid of losing, I started to lose. Because so is a man thinking, so is he. And so I had some fears of losing some things. And I started to manifest what I had been meditating on. And I got to a place where things were being stripped away and I can remember saying to myself, what is it to gain the whole world and lose your soul? What is it to have all of these things set before you and have no peace? Good job, good car, good neighborhood, all of those things, but I had no peace. Hallelujah. Oh my God. And I realized that every time I went to sleep and woke up, guess who was still there? I was still there. And I was still dealing with me. I couldn't get away from me. And I remember crying out, God, and I said, okay. Okay, God, I said, you know, I've come after you before and hell has raised up and I've shrinked back because of the hell, the opposition that's come up. I said, but Father, no more. I said, I can't shrink back. I, I have to continue to move forward no matter what it looks like. No matter what I lose, I have to move forward. And let me tell you, I lost some relationships. I had to take my hands off some family members that I had been trying to be God in their life. And he said, will you give me you? And I said, okay, this time, God, I give you me. And when I showed up to New Beginnings, y'all think, like you said, they get up and they say, oh, pastor got an A, always got a yes in her mouth. But because I was stripped, I was stripped. And I understood at that time that all I need is you, Jesus. All I want is you, Jesus. But let me tell you some good news, some great news, some fabulous news. If you're sitting here and you're like, mm, that, yeah, that worked for you. <laughs> Sounds real good. Go ahead with the go ahead, guys. <laughs> the good news is that he is a God who restores. He's a God he said, I'll renew you. I'll, I'll, I'll give you back what the enemy stole from you. And I'm standing before you and I'm reaping. I'm reaping from what I sold because what I sold was my life. So he tells him, go. I need you to just follow the simple instructions.
instructions. And I know, Abraham, I'm telling you to leave. And I'm not telling you exactly where you're going. But if I don't tell you exactly where you're going, that means I'm ordering your steps. That means that you have to lean and rely on me for every move that you make. He says, and I will show you as you go, I will show you where you're going. So today for some of you, it's as you go. It's as you go that you'll get the instructions that you'll know the place that God is taking you to. Some of you have had a glimpse, but you have no idea. Say it. Because if he showed it all to you, it'd blow your mind. I know if he would have showed me when I showed up to New Beginnings that I would be standing here. Right? I always tell y'all, I ain't know nothing about the west side. I'd have found me a church on the east side. <laughs> no, but when God is calling you, it really does make you uncomfortable. You can no longer even be comfortable in the place that you've become so familiar with. It really does. It, 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 you almost feel it like there's, there's an emptiness. You're like, God, I, I don't even know what this is. I, I don't even know why... Why I'm doing all of this and I'm still not satisfied is because it's the place of calling that God is wow. calling you to. And until you are living out and walking out your purpose, yeah. it's then that God will fill you to the full where you'll be in a place of overflow. Yeah. Let's go to. He says, I will make you into a great nation. And I will bless you and I will make your name great and you will be a blessing. He says, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to make you a nation. I'm going to give you territory. All right. I'm going to give you territory. I'm going to give you land. He says, and I'm going to bless you. And so when I looked at the word blessed, you see it so many times in Genesis where he tells them to, I, I, I blessed you. And it talks about being uh, fruitful and multiplying. He says, so I want to bless you. I want you to be fruitful and I want you to multiply, Abram. This is what I want you to do. And, and because we're his children, we're his descendants, I say to you, Darius, today, he wants you to be blessed. He wants you to be fruitful and multiply. He wants you to cause what you have to, to become greater. He wants what you have for you to give it to him and let him bless it and multiply. See, when we're fruitful, see, he says here, and I will make you a blessing. See, when I'm fruitful, people are able to come and eat from me. Yeah. Yeah. Pastor T, Prophet T says, I'm the solution. Yeah. That's what you become when you allow God to bless you. He said, I will make you great. Oh, I will make you great. And I will make your name great. Yes, Lord. I will make your name great. I'll tell you how God will do a thing. So, I was sitting at home and I was thinking about something. Thought about it. And I think I nodded out for a little while. It's, I always tell people I'm on that way. So I think I nodded out for a while. And when I woke up, I think, because I nodded out, I looked at my phone. And on my phone it says, Adrian, they're asking about you. The very thing that I thought of, I get a message that says, my name was being made great. My name was already in rooms that I had not walked into. But because it was on my mind. The Bible said, you ain't even got a wonder, daughter. Let me me let them send you this message real quick. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Then I get a word yesterday that just confirms what I heard when I got the text message on and I'm just believing God. Yeah. And I can't wait to stand before you and get a testimony. But God will make, he says him, I will make your name great and you will be a blessing. Let's go to three. And I will bless those who bless you. Connection. I will bless those who bless you. 
Our mom and our dad, our spiritual parents are blessed because they are a blessing. Yeah. They are a blessing to the kingdom. They are a blessing. He said, and whoever curses you, I will curse them. He said, whoever's your enemy, they my enemy. So watch who you mess with. If you don't like me, don't let me know. He says, I will curse and all the people on the earth will be blessed Thank through Lord. you. And so he's setting Abram up to let him know that everything after him through his seed is going to be blessed because of his seed. And so he gives him this announcement that before anything else, this is just in the first instructions of God. <laughs> In the first instructions of God, he set me up real good. He gave me seven things he want to do for me. Yeah. Completion. He, he got seven things he want to do for me. Just, just in the instructions of God. I want to bless you. I want, I want to make your name great. I, I, got, I, just, I just want to. Because that's the type of God I'm He said, I just want to. Yes, Lord. And so when we looked at this, Abram has an encounter with God. And as I was thinking about encounters with God, he comes to give us insight. Yes. That's what he does. He comes to reveal the mysteries of heaven and give us insight. And when I started to think about that, I was like, wow. I said, God, you give us insight in sight into us. Yes. Insights, sight into us yes. is what your insight does. It allows us to see how you see us. You give us insight to allow us to know I see you, daughter. I see you, son. I see the plans. 20, Jeremiah 29 and 11. I know the purpose and the plans that I have for you. He's giving you insight. And so anytime you have an encounter with the Lord, you should come away with some insight. When you have questions, about your future and about your, your, your agenda, whatever it is, whatever you have a question about, go sit with the Lord so that he can give you insight. Oh my God. There's nothing that he doesn't know. There's nothing he, that, nothing is a surprise to him, nothing, no. none of this. It's not a surprise that you sit here today, even though you might have wrestled with getting here. It's not a surprise that you made it. He knew on 423 said they will be sitting at 2060 West 65th Street. Mm -hmm. Allow him to give you insight, sight into you. That's what he did with Abram. All righty, let's go to four. Is this good today, y'all? I'm just kind of walking it out for y'all today. Is this good? All right, he says, so Abram went as the Lord, here we go again, I am. Remember, every time you see capital L-O-R-D, this is I am, okay? He says, so So Abram went as I am had told him, and I want to stop there. So he went. The I am that would show him, the I am who would provide for him, the I am who had his destiny in his hands. Yes, yes. And so when I looked at this, I said, wow, God, I said, this is, this, 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 is, this is good right here, Lord. I said, because you give him instructions and you tell him to go, but, but it, it's a little different because in the commentaries it says that the only people who really lead their tribe, the place that their family, are people who don't have land. They own none. So they got to keep everything on their shoulder. <laughs> if I can't carry it, I can't have it, right? <laughs> or those that were on the run. He was neither. But this is what God did. This was God's plan. So, when we look at this, I'm like, wow, God, I said... Even here, you were announcing who you were. 
and we look at it, it says, in the beginning was the word, the word was with God, the word was God. From Genesis to Revelation, he's been announcing who he is. You 
going to come into that same opportunity to do what he told you to do the first time. I'm going to go back to my notes. So then he says, the Lord God of your fathers, the God of Abraham, the God of Isaac. And so I looked at this and I, I said, wow. I said, just in this short exchange from uh, 5 to 16, he stated this three times. So I said, huh. Because know that each generation that came, he reiterated the promise, the covenant that he had made to Abraham. Okay. So in my sanctified imagination, I said, okay, Lord, I said, you've mentioned this three times in this exchange. He says, because I repeated the same message three times to Abram, Isaac, and Jacob. Oh, yeah. All right, y'all, so let's go to 15. So moreover, in addition, and he talks about... Um, Israel is his chosen people. And he's the covenant keeping God. That if he said it, he'll do it. He is a promise keeper. He is not a man that he should lie to some God, that he should repent. So if he said it, it is so. And I don't care what it looks like. I don't care how long you've been waiting on it. If he said it, he said it. What I would suggest, this is just a suggestion, just another suggestion. I'm full, I'm full of suggestions today. Say what he says. Yes. That's it. Say what he said till you see what he said. Don't get tired. Don't grow weary and well doing because you don't see what you've been saying right now. Because if he said it, it is. If he said it, you might as well say, so be it. It's, it's done. Amen. So be it. It is done. But I love here when he says, this is my name forever. And so I said, forever, irrevocable, unchangeable, immutable, undeniable. Forever. Forever. If he said it, it's forever. It's what he said. That's what he said. And he says, and it will be a memorial to generations. Yes. And so when I thought about memorial, when you think about memorial, what I, I, for me, when I think about memorial, I look, I, I think about dead, right? I think about something that I'm honoring because it's dead or something I'm paying my respects to because it's dead. It's, it's gone. And so we, we have, we head up, we have a memorial. That's, that's what I thought. So as I started to mine the word, I found out that it actually means to, it means that I am will be remembered and served by his people, set apart for others, that what he's done should be praiseworthy and it should be something that I speak of often. It's a memorial. It be, should be something that I speak of often. Yes. And so when I started to think about that, I said, I'll ask them, when is the last time that you shared your story? Okay. When is the last time that you shared your testimony? When is the last time that you told somebody about the goodness of Jesus Christ and all that he's done for you? When is the last time that you shared that you made a memorial because his name is praiseworthy? When is the last time? We overcome by the blood of the Lamb. We overcome Him. We overcome Him. Who is Him? The adversary. We overcome Him by the blood of the Lamb and the word of our testimony. When is the last time you shared your story? Why are we allowing people to go through the stuff that we went through if they don't have to go through it? I share my testimony. I share it because I need somebody to know that you don't have to stay the way that you were. Hallelujah. I have to let people know that you're not what the naysayers said that you were. I have to let people know that I am fearfully and wonderfully made even though somebody kept repeatedly and repeatedly and repeatedly telling me who I was. Telling me I was stupid. Telling me I was dumb. And I and I and sometimes you can see. 
And he says, I'm, I'm all of that. And what's even greater to me is because we haven't even tapped into all that that I am is. And I know that because he says his thoughts are higher than our thoughts. His ways are greater than our ways. And so even in our, in, in, in our humanness. That's right. Come on here. He is the great I am. And so in John 14, 13 to 14, he says, and whatever you ask in my name, that I will do. You all just ask for some things in his name. He says that the Father may be glorified in the Son. If you ask anything in my name, I will do it. And so when I started to look at this, because I, I, I use this scripture often when I'm getting ready to do some things, especially when I get ready to minister, I, I pray this prayer because I don't want, I, I can't do it. I can't do it. It's beyond my, my capabilities to be able to really minister from an authentic place. Not just getting up here to give y'all a speech. Because I call a speech is when you just you get up. Easter speech. <laughs> and it carries no weight. And so when I get up before God's people, I want whatever I have to carry the weight of God, the weight of his presence, the weight of his spirit. And so I know that I have to go before him and I say, I know whatever I ask in your name, Father. So then I started to look and I said, okay, Lord, I said, because some people going to want to know, what is that whatever? Some folks been asking for whatever in Jesus' name, it ain't got nothing to do with Jesus. He said, whatever you ask in my name, I will do that my father may be glorified in the son. So it's to bring glory. So the whatever... I ask has to be attached to the glory of God. Whatever I ask has to produce glory. Okay, so when you look at a world problem and they say this equals this will produce this, so my whatever must produce glory. Philippians 4 and 8 it says finally, because I'm going to help y'all with y'all whatever. <laughs> Finally, brother. Fine, finally, no beginnings. Finally, 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 brother. And I'm getting to the end of a thing. Whatever things are true. Yeah. Whatever things are noble. Whatever things are just. Whatever things are pure. Whatever things are lovely. Whatever things are of good report. If there is any virtue and if there is anything praiseworthy, here we go back to praiseworthy, uh -huh. meditate on these things. This is your whatever. Yes. This is it. Yes. Because these here will produce glory. Thank you, Jesus. Ah, Father, Father, Father. Ah, so I'm going to start in this story. We're not going to finish it, but y'all going to hear it again, okay? Because I really wanted to drive home today about his name. When he kept announcing who he is, he was telling you I'm the covenant-keeping God, and even before he announced what Lord meant and the explanation to go wrong, along with it from the very beginning, he's been telling you who he is, and He's shown us through the scriptures that even as he has appeared to Lord, that whatever the assignment was for whoever he gave it to, when we look, thank God for the scriptures that we're able to go back and look at the history and Say see that. that God did everything that he said. When he says, I will make you a great nation, they came out 600,000 strong. Yeah. 
just the men. Uh -huh. That sounds pretty great to me. Yes, Lord. Uh -huh. I'll take you into a land. I'll make you a great nation and take you into a land. It gives them territory. Uh -huh. Even in the scriptures, when we look at it, he tells him, and I'm not sure where it's at, but it's in there. He tells Abram, you won't see it. He said, you, 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 you won't see the fulfillment of what I'm, what I'm saying, but my word is good. Yes. Yes. He tells them, you know, they're, they're going to go in because of their disobedience. They're going to go in and they're going to be enslaved for 400 years. He tells them this, but he also tells them what I told you. It's going to happen. So I need somebody here today. I need you to know. I need you to hold on. Even when we got up, somebody was talking about generations. You know, did you know that they consider generations anybody that was born through you or you adopted? Do you know that the blessing that is upon our spiritual parents? Come on. Can be ours because we're adopted yes. into yes. this family. Yes. So he tells him, he says, they they won't see. He says, but this is why he had to keep repeating the message that I, I know I said it to Abram, but Isaac and Jacob, I need you to know what I told you, your granddaddy. I need I, I need you to know what he told. And so I need some of y'all to start rehearsing. The story that's been told, the blessings that are upon your family line, I need you to start to tell them so that they don't have to wonder, so they don't have to try to figure it out on their own, so they can know where, where they came, where they come from. Yeah, Got to tell our babies the blessings that are upon them. They, they know all the other stuff, y'all. They, they, because they've been ear hustling, they've been watching, they all, and they know all the other stuff. Les, I think I shared with y'all that one thing I started with my grandbabies was telling them their birth story. Yeah. Because I want them to know, I don't care what you were conceived out of, I need you to know the blessing that's upon your life. Yeah. So I tell Zariah all the time, I said, they, your mommy said you wouldn't be still. I said, because you're my worshiper. I said, you're my evangelist. She can't hold water, y'all. If she know what she telling me. So that's why I know that I have to put the word of the Lord in her mouth. I have to sit with her. I have to let her know who the great I am is so that she will run and go tell that too. So yes, I wanted to look at it. So I'm going to drop down. I know Faith, I said we were going to go to Acts 1 through 16. And this was at the gate of beautiful. And so I'm going to give you this and then we're going to stop and see what the Lord wants to do or if he has anything else to say. Um, I'm looking for Y'all say glory. 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 The Lord and hand praise. So we're going to stop here today. Acts 3 and 6. Then Peter said, Silver and gold I do not have, but what I do have I give to you in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Rise up and walk. We're going to stop right there. If you all could stand to your feet. Even as we go into Acts and Jesus has ascended and the apostles have their charge to go. And they go and they do the work that God has called them to. He says, greater works will you do. And so they start 
the ministry yeah. of the new church. Yeah. And it says that when we come out of the Gospels, it speaks about how Jesus healed the lame and the blind man in the temple. And we see that it says that Peter goes and he sees the man laying outside of the temple. Outside the gate at the gate, beautiful. And it says it's called the gate beautiful because of how it was adored in brass. It said it was beautiful. But it was still the outward place. It was not the place of the temple. But then I also understand that gates mean access. And as they go to go into worship, it says they go into worship at the ninth hour, which is around 3 p.m. Yeah. And I said, wow, Lord, I said, you would have them go and pray and worship at the ninth hour. And I said, wow, the same hour that our Lord Jesus was crucified yeah. was the ninth hour. And so when it says that they stood there and as they came around the ninth hour to go and worship and pray, they see a man that is laying there that has been brought there every day. If we go into 4, Acts 4, it says that he had been this way for 40 years. 40 years of being brought to the gate to beg. I came today to tell somebody, I don't care how long you've been in what Ooh, you Jesus. in. Yeah. I don't care. Because the risen Savior to set free, to deliver. I have all power to do that. I am the great I am is what he says. He says, I have the power to do that. Again, I come to tell you that he had an encounter with the kingdom outside the gate. Kingdom, no sickness, no disease. already been giving you. They walk past here and they, they, they give you silver and gold. But it hasn't changed your situation. It hasn't changed what you've been dealing with. Every day they're still bringing you here because you keep getting exactly what you're asking for. But the great I am knows he has insight into you and he knows exactly what you need. Jesus, stop looking at 
at your situation and fix your eyes on Jesus. He wants to get you out of that place, that, that broken place. He wants, he wants, he wants to fix your eyes. Fix your eyes. So, Father, I thank you. I thank you right now in the name of Jesus for your people who have heard your word today, Father. Father, let them know that you are a promise keeper. That the God who said it is the God that will do it. Let your people know that they can call upon your name, oh God. Let your people know that you are ready to move in their situation and on their behalf. Father, I thank you right now in the name of Jesus that you are Jehovah Jireh. You are the God who healeth thee. You are the God who is able to go into every body and every situation, oh God. You are the God of miracles. You are the God of recreating miracles, oh God. You are the God who is able to go in and recreate blood cells. You are the God who is able to go in and open up arteries. You are the God who is able to regulate the beat of the heart. You are the God who is able to open up blood vessels in our eyes. You are the God who is able to give us 2020. You are the God who is able to go in and, and put back bone and marrow in joints. You are the God who is able to align death in our back. You are the God who is able to remove arthritis. You are the God who is You are the God who is able to release anxiety. You are the God. You are the great I am. 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 Even in this atmosphere, I'm going to ask you now that if there is anything in your body, that you would lay hands on that part of your body. Lay hands on that part of your body. And even as you are laying hands right now, the recreative power of God, spine, line up in the name of Jesus. All discs must be in place. All inflammation, I speak against inflammation right now in the name of Jesus. We speak to eyes right now in the name of Jesus. Some people deal with pressure behind their eye. We ask that the pressure would come down, that the numbers would be regulated. We speak to joints. We speak to joints. God, we thank you right now for your healing power. Give your people the evidence that they might have the testimony. Give your people the evidence, oh God. Thank you for change, Dr. Report.
forth, Lord. Go into our generations right now, Father, and begin to bless like you promised Abraham because you promised it to her. So we thank you right now, Lord. We thank you that her word, that the word that you poured into her, that she poured out to your people, landed on good ground, Lord. That their hearts were open to receive and they will forever be changed. We thank you right now in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Bible school, okay? 
All right, so the next voice you're going to hear is our very own Deacon Sean. He's going to give us a principle of giving. And the reason that we do that is to tell you what God says about giving. I don't want you to take my word for it, but we want you to know what the word says. Amen? Amen. 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 Wasn't that an amazing service? Yeah. Right, I am Deacon Sean, and my assignment is to get a principle. So, um, God has established a tithe which is 10% of one's earning as a basic standard for giving and bless, protect, provide the believer and testify of him. I'm, gonna do, uh, I'm doing principle four. Mal Malachi 3, 10 through 12. Bring all your tithes into the storehouse. Bring all your tithes into the storehouse. <laughs> That they, that they may be food in my house and try me. Try, and try me now is this, says the Lord of hosts. If I will not open for you the windows of heaven and pour out for such blessings, such blessings that there will be, that, that there will not be room enough to receive it. I'm going to stop right there. I'm just going to stop right there. He said enough right there. All he asks for is 10%. You can have the rest, you know, 10% and you have the rest, you know, so uh, before I didn't know about tithing, uh, I would just give what I had in my pocket, a little bit of this, a little bit of that, I was through, busted and disgusted, you know what I mean, so when I learned about tithing, when I learned about giving my 10%, First. Yes. first, I mean first. first. I ain't gonna get them Jordans first. first. I'm gonna give God first, yes. and then take care of everything else. Yes. And when I establish that, yes. there's no lack. No, no lack. No lack. Only asking for is ten percent, y'all. Ten percent. Let's get ten percent. Give, give, give God what He asks. Y'all keep the rest. Please don't forget to bless our, our, our senior pastor, yeah. Pastor A. She poured out today. She blessed us today. She blessed us all year round. It's time to give. We'll get some traveling music. And we'll step to your feet as we get the traveling.
honor that everybody had the opportunity to, to give Lord a show you right. Amen. Amen. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. All right, all right. All right, all right. All right. Yes, all right. All right. All right. Lord. I ask you to cover everyone in this house under the sound of my voice, Lord, and bless bless everyone who gave, Lord, and whoever couldn't give, Lord, bless them so they'll be able to give next time. Yeah. Lord, I ask you to cover everyone as they go home, Lord. I ask you to continue to cover our senior leaders, continue to cover this house. Lord. In Jesus' name, I pray. Amen. 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 Come on. Speak to our money, money. I am a giver and a sower. Jesus is the great I am. Cities. Yeah. So that's one of our main purposes for 
then so, so what, what we want to do is sponsor these kids to go to the park. So think about it. Get your monies together. You know, do what you have to do and, and, and be part of this travel that we're doing. So that's it. Thank you. Thank you. All right, all right. Thank you all. It's a great opportunity. So try to make the July 22nd event. Last thing, our women's conference is soon approaching. Yeah. Woo -woo. Yeah. Saturday, May 13th at 9 a.m. to 2 p.m. So please go on Eventbrite or see Elder Kim to purchase tickets. You also can cash out your tickets for Morning Glory. See the flyers for re-information. And that is all. Is there any first time visitors? Raise your hand, please. Amen. All right. Amen. Were we blessed all day today? Oh my God, was it phenomenal? I couldn't get dressed for listening to 815 service. And then I got here and passed the A. The Lord, he just blessed us for you. Thank you for the calling the light. Thank you for being our senior pastor. We love you so much. As we stand to we love you. As we stand to our feet, we want you to keep in mind our anniversary, our 13th anniversary climax is over the weekend. Friday night. It's going to be off the scale. We need you to be here. Grab a flyer. Apostle um, Mays Friday night. Saturday, Apostle Cook Coffee. Is that the, his wife wearing a mismatch? Yeah. 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 Oh, you in for a treat. You in for a treat. In for a treat. And then Pastor Octavia on that Sunday. And we're going to dinner. You have to make your reservations for dinner. We're going to have a wonderful weekend. Yeah. We need you to be a part of it. And about the um, ark. If you can't go sponsor a kid, yeah. if you can't go sponsor a kid, yeah. and then we want to see you on Tuesday night in Bible study. Yeah. I throw that in. Listen, we get powerful word, powerful word, yeah. but it's in Bible study where we get a full understanding of what it's all about. You need to be in your Bible study. You need to be in your Bible study. I hope it haunts you in your dreams all week long. I'm a good Tuesday. You need to be in Bible study. Amen. Father, we thank you for everything that our hearts have received. We thank you for every word that we receive. Lord, we ask that you would let us just bask for it all. We let it change our life. Let us go out into the world and let our light so shine so that men can see you, God, that they might glorify the God that was within, within us. So we ask that you bless your people, God. Keep them, cover them, protect them, and then bless them to meet us back here Tuesday night. And if they don't make it Tuesday, we want to see them Friday. In Jesus' name, we thank you. Amen. Amen.